Hey, let me show you how I built this calendar using the sequence function. It automatically adjusts to the number of days in the month. So let me just show you what I mean. So right now we have the year. If you look at the top left, I have the year is 2025 and the month is February. If I scroll to the right, there should be 28 days. And you can see there are 28 days. If I pick, uh, let's say, for instance, February of 2024, which we know is a leap year, there should be 29 days. And if you look here, we have 29 days. And let's just pick a different month uh, just to show that it's dynamic. Let's pick June of 2024. And you can see here we got 30 days. Uh, I'm going to show you how I built that. I used the sequence function. Um, just double check you do have the sequence function in your version of Excel. It's not available in all versions. But even if you don't have it, um, watch this video. Maybe you'll find something of value anyways. All right, let's get started. To the left, I have the four functions that I use to create that dynamic calendar range. Um, end of month, XLOOKUP, date, and sequence. I'll quickly touch on them as I'm creating that range, just in case you don't have uh, familiarity with all of them. All right, so the first step that you'll want to do is create a tab called List. Right. So here I've already created one with a list of years that I want to be available to select from in my calendar range and a list of months and the number of days uh, in each month. You'll notice I have February highlighted in yellow because it can be either 28 days or 29 days. So go ahead and create a tab with this list here. All right. You can put in as many years as you want as well. All right, so the next thing you want to do is create another tab called Calendar. So I've already just roughly laid out what I'm going to have over here. Okay, and so the first thing we'll do once the Calendar tab is created is just create a drop down for the list of years. So I've just selected the cell. I'm going to go to the data menu, and then from there, there's the data validation option. So I'm going to select data validation and I'm going to select a list. And this is going to give me the option to choose my list of years. So I'm going to select that, hit enter. And now I can select a year. So I'll just select 2024. All right, next we'll do the same thing for the months of the year. So data validation. And we're going to use a list and I will select my list of 12 months. All right, so now we have our list of months. I'm going to just put pick February. All right, so let's start working on returning the number of days in the month of February. So let's go back to the list tab at the bottom left here. And I use two functions to accomplish this. I use the date function and the end of month function. Date function is really simple. You just have to enter uh, provided a year. So let's just for the fun of it, let's provide it the year of 2024. Uh, the month we can provide it the second month and the day one and it's just going to give us the date, right? So not much to it. Now let's start working on the end of month function and I'll show you how I built out the month of February. All right, so I'm going to delete what I have in the cell over here. This is what I initially had um, to return it. So I'll rebuild this um, this this formula here. All right, so month of February. So let's cover end of month. So end of month basically looks to return the last day of a provided month. So let me just give you an example here. So equals end of month. Right, and now it's looking for a start date. So I'm going to give it the start date to make this dynamic already. And oh, also, by the way, the Microsoft website recommends using end of month with a formula or with a function like the date function. So it's looking for the start date. So in this case here, I'm going to use the date function as the first uh, argument, right? So we're going to go and pick the year. The year is going to be from our calendar. So that's going to be 2024. Uh, at least that's what's in this drop down now, right? And then the month, well, we're always working with the month of February, so I'm going to hard code two and one for the month and day. And now the next argument in the end of month function um, is what month do I want to return the last day of? So currently we're working with the month of February, so if I want to return the last day of the month of February, I would use zero. If I want to use um, the last day of the month of January, I would use negative one. If I want to use the last day of March, I would use plus one. So in this case here, I want the current month. I'm going to select zero 
and I'm going to close that bracket out and hit enter and so now it gave me my uh, serial number here but if I were to just um, convert that into a date you'll see it'll give me February uh, 29th so let's just hit OK and there you go so you can see it returned February 29th so it's really simple the way I determine the number of days in the month of February I'm just going to subtract the last day of February from the last day of January and that's going to give me my total number of days so let's just go back into our cell and finish the second part of this uh, formula so I'm going to do equals or sorry not equals minus end of month and I'm going to provided the same almost the same identical argument so I'm going to put date and then the year is going to be 2024 again so I'm going to go back to the calendar tab pick the year that's in my drop down right the month well in this case here it's going to be February again and the day will put one again and I'm going to close that bracket and then we're going to go to the second argument what's the last day that I'm what's the last day of the month that I'm looking for so in this case here it's going to be January so instead of picking zero for the current month I'm going to pick negative one for January and I'm going to close that out and hit enter and so now because I have this formatted as date it's giving me um, an actual date so let's just go back and set this to uh, general and you're gonna see I'll have 29 days and I'm just gonna hit OK and so now this is this is linked right so this this number here is now linked to the year that I select in my calendar so right now I have 2024 we know it was a leap year I have 29 days if I pick 2025 and I go back to my list tab now you can see it, it updated to 28 days all right, so let's cover what the sequence function does. It allows you to generate a list of sequential numbers in an array. So let me just give you a really quick example here. So I'm gonna just type in equals sequence, and there's only one mandatory argument, and that's how many rows do you wanna spill your numbers into. So for instance, if I enter the number three, I'm gonna get back one, two, and three, and there you go, right? Now, if I go to the second argument, if I wanted to spill this out over rows and columns, I would just specify the number of columns. So let's put three for the number of rows and three for the number of columns. And now I should have all the way one through nine over three rows and three columns. I'll hit enter. And there you go. You can see that's what it did. Um, let's go to the next argument in the sequence function. And that's going to be our start number. So let's say instead of starting at one, I want to start at two. I can just hit enter two. Now I'm going to go, It's this uh, array is going to spill from two to 10. I'll hit enter and there we go and I can also go to the fourth argument which is uh, by how much do I want to step so let's say I want to increment by two instead of one I can just enter that value I'll close that out and now you can see it goes from two to eighteen incrementing by units of two and another common way that people do use the sequence function is to automatically number uh, rows right so here I have a table that's using the sequence function and I'm just using it in conjunction with the count a function which just counts uh, the number of cells that have data in them in a specified range so in this case here my range is the column K right and so let me just show you why people like to do this right it automatically uh, numbers um, items for you so let's just say I want to add a fruit here I'm gonna say peaches and hit enter and now I have the number eight all right so that's a sequence function in a nutshell all right and so let's cover the last function here and that's the XLOOKUP function right so I'm just gonna delete the sequence function example um, you can also use VLOOKUP in this um, uh, formula as well if you wanted to but I use XLOOKUP it's the new and improved VLOOKUP as everybody knows all right so um, let me just show you a quick example of X lookup. So let's say I wanted to look up um, the value one. So I have a value here, it's one. And I want to know what is associated with one in my table here to the left. So we can see here that uh, one is associated with apples, right? So um, the X lookup function would just help me return that value. So equals X lookup, right? So my first argument for the X lookup function is what is my lookup value? In this case here, it's one right and then the next argument is my lookup array so where am I gonna find one right uh, well I'm gonna find it in this range over here so I'm just gonna select that entire range and then I'm gonna go to the next argument and that is my return array so once I find the number one and my lookup array what do I want to return right and where am I gonna find that I'm gonna find that in this range over here I'm just gonna close that out really quick 
and hit enter and it should give me apples right and if I were to update this to the number two I should get oranges right so that's how the XLOOKUP function works in a nutshell all right final moment we have all been waiting for let's go and build this out the final product right so let's go back to the calendar tab and uh, let's just go to the top over here and I'm going to start by typing in my sequence uh, function right so let's go equals sequence right our first argument is the number of rows so in this case here I wanted to just um, display across the top row so I'm gonna pick one right number of columns right so this is where I'm gonna use that X lookup function number of columns is gonna be the number of days in our month right so I'm gonna type in X lookup right and our lookup value is going to be the month so I'm gonna select the cell uh, B2 which has our month right and I'm gonna go now for the lookup array we're gonna go back to the list tab and my lookup array is going to be this range over here and then I'm going to uh, move on to the next argument which is my return array so now that's going to be this range over here right this is the column where I'm going to find the number of days I'm going to close out my X lookup formula right and now the start number I'm going to use the date function right so our start number I'm going to type in equals date and let's go back into our calendar tab, right? And I'm just going to provide it the information that we've uh, got selected in our drop downs over here. So uh, our year is going to be uh, cell B1, right? The month is going to be the month that we have in our drop down. And the day we can hard code that to one. And I'm just going to close that out, all right? And now I'm going to close out the sequence function as well and hit enter. And so now you can see it has. Um, spilled the date range across uh, all the various columns let's just update the um, the format here to a date format so uh, you can actually I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to create a custom format format cells and let's just go to the uh, custom and uh, I wanted to display I'm gonna type in MMM so I can get the first three letters of the month and I just want the numerical value so day day and that's gonna give me my format that way so I'm gonna hit OK and all right I don't know that's just a little glitchy it didn't update the first three so let me just do a quick format painter here and try that again on these ones there all right and then uh, for my day of the week I'm gonna do the same thing again so equals sequence right so the number of rows I wanted to spill out over one row and the number of columns is going to be the number of days in the month so in this case I'm gonna do an X lookup All right my lookup value will be the month next I'm gonna to go to my lookup array which is under the list tab All right and here's my range of months and the return value All right so here is my column with my list of days in the month close that argument out right and my start date once again I'm going to enter the date function and we're going to go back to the calendar tab here and so the year will be the selected year in our drop down list the month will be the selected month in our drop down list and the day will be one I'm going to close that bracket out and then I'm going to close out the sequence function and hit enter and let's just do a quick format once again so let's just go to the end and I'm gonna right click on this and I'm going to do format cells and I'm gonna do custom again and we're gonna type in uh, the letter D three times so I can know what day of the week it is and hit OK and once again it did that glitchy thing where it doesn't update the first few so let's just do a quick format painter there alright so anyways this is uh, this is it all right, so let's just confirm that this is working. So right now we have uh, February of 2025. We should have a range of 28 days. Let's just scroll out to the right, and yes, we do. Um, let's pick 2024. We know it was a leap year, so I'm gonna scroll out to the right again. And yeah, looks like we got 29 days there, so it looks like it's working good. And let's just pick a different month. Uh, let's pick uh, January. We should go out to 31 days. I'm gonna scroll out to the right and yeah everything is updating perfectly 
Okay, so just one quick note before I end the video. You'll notice that in the example I provided at the beginning, I had uh, some formatting here, like uh, you know, highlighting my weekends in blue. Um, for the sake of time, I didn't get into that in this video, but I did create another video uh, just a couple days ago where I created this team calendar from scratch and I show how I did the formatting uh, for the weekend. So feel free to check that video out. I'll have a link in the description. Other than that, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.